Dear colleague, welcome to this very short lecture on the age index. The age index is a compound measurement attempting to estimate the productivity and citation impact of a scientist. Thus, both the quality and quantity of a scientific output, and it is endeavoring to give a more balanced judgment on the continuous production of a scientist, reducing the impact of both a few highly cited papers, as well as of numerous papers that few will bother to cite, and it has become commonly used in the academic world. However, to be honest, I have not met many colleagues who know how it is calculated, so let's have a look at this. We can define the age index as the maximum value of age that you can gain given that you have published at least age papers that have been each cited at least age times. Or we can say that age is the highest number of publications that has been cited at least as many times as that number. This is actually more simple than it sounds, and I think it will become clear when we look at a few examples on how it is calculated. So, you identify your papers and how many times each has been cited. Then you sort your papers according to the number of citations. In this example, we have five papers and age can never be higher than the total number of papers, thus not higher than five. These five papers have been cited uh, one, two, six, seven and nine times, respectively. The age index in this example is free, so let us see how this was calculated. We have at least one paper cited at least one time, at least two papers cited at least two times, and we have three papers cited at least three times, but we don't have four papers cited at least four times, so the age index is free. In the next example, we have at least one paper cited at least one time, at least two papers cited at least two times, at least three papers cited at least three times, and we have four papers cited at least four times. But we don't have five papers cited at least five times, so the age index is here four. In the final example, we have three papers cited at least three times, but we don't have four papers cited at least four times, so the age index is free. So if you have an age index of 10, this means that you have 10 papers cited at least 10 times each. 50 means 50 papers cited at least 50 times each, and an age index of 100 means that you have 100 papers cited at least 100 times each. This is how the age index is calculated manually, but in reality we will of course use internet databases and let them do the work for us. You can use, for example, Web of Cyan or Scopus, but the easiest is to use Google Scholar. The age index will differ somewhat depending on which tool you are using, and Google is a little bit more inclusive and positive, but it is also very easy to use. So just register for free at Google Scholar, and after a couple of minutes you will have your age index and your profile and list of publications will also be easy to find for others. I often get the question, what is a good age index? You will find various answers to this question on the internet. And here is the reply I got from AI regarding a good age index in medicine. However, age index will vary much between different specialities, and especially between different career stages. Simply put, the longer you have been a scientist, the more publications you will have, and the more quoted you will be. Thus, if you want to evaluate your own age index, then compare this to others in your field of speciality that are at the same point in their career. Just as an example from my own department, Johanna has an age index of 6. She has just finished her PhD and is ready to become assistant professor. My wife has an age index of 18 and is associated professor, while I myself has been full professor for 13 years and have reached an age index of 41. 
which of course seems very mediocre when compared with my mentor, Marwan Haris, who now is 72 years old and has an age index of 102. And with that, you know everything you need to know about the age index. And remember that you will find 250 more lectures at the Stereotactic Academy at stereotactic.org. Thank you for your attention.